And can you describe for us what, what the place where you were living in the ghetto was like? From the beginning it wasn't too bad. And then because you, um, all the smelly buckets I did not, well, I had no other choice. It uh, was forever a lot of people coming. The, nobody was cooking, of course, because where do you get the food from? It was not scrubbles, but there was no happiness. They were always whispering. And I was with another auntie, which I had a family and children. And um, they were, must have gone and then went back to Karmelitska when they told me. They were coming from all relations which I never, ever, ever met in my life. Man, woman, lot of children, lot of children. So the, the room where you were living... It was getting crowded and crowded and I landed up by the door and everybody would walk over me to go to the buckets mm. because by then there, there was no... I don't know if there was no water, but obviously if they couldn't use the bathrooms there was no, no water because they had to get rid of the buckets go empty, mm. not get rid of mm. but they emptied them. So life wasn't at all nice. There was no singing, sort of everything died, like the last bird flew away. Uh, there was no harmony. I think the people were scrabbling between each other. There was a lot of children um, lying on the steps leading into buildings on the street. In the that day, it doesn't matter. So if they were abandoned or the parents died, I don't know. Um, it was a lot of sadness, but uh, nobody, I suppose it's very hard to talk to a child. I'm talking as a grown up, but in those days children were children and parents did not discuss everything uh, with them. Uh, they didn't tell about the danger uh, just as well, because I think if they would tell more about it, I probably would not do what I was told to do. And how did you get out of the gates? Were there gates? Was there a wall? Uh, there was a um, um, man in uniform. I don't know if he was Polish or German. And uh, he just, well, I don't know, he wasn't there. He was there, but, and we go all out. So if he was bright, I don't know. But of course, going in wasn't any problem. When I first went to the ghetto, they didn't have the brick wall. They just... Um, um, petition it off with like um, builders, um, I don't know what you call them, uh, where they cut the wood, that sort of thing. Then they put a little bit of bob wire, then they build the brick wall, then they put the bob wire and glass. And I don't know if the bob wire was electric or not. So, so just tell me about that again. You, um, She made plans to get you out of the I ghetto. I don't know. Don't I can only. Because I certainly didn't. And did she, uh, did, did she, what were you wearing? I honestly, I can't remember. I know what she looked like. She had, I can still see her now. She had a silver tooth, dimples, quite well. I was little, so she was tall. But according to my auntie, she was tall. The brown coat and not a tear. And the only thing she kept repeating to me, just be good, be told what you have to do. Don't ask questions, we'll come for you, just be good. And I pleaded with, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. It's one thing to go with the crowd and it's one thing to out of the ghetto with the when, previous time and by yourself you look out and you think, well, I can imagine what a child must feel. And the, she was not crying. She said, we'll definitely come from you and everything will be fine all the lovely things, and uh, she just practically pushed me out. And how old were you? Nine, ten, 